A common denominator among many vertical SaaS startups is that they target markets that are not really digitized or with types of customers who are not necessarily spending a majority of their time in front of a computer. So it's kind of harder to reach them. This is why, to sell them software, vertical SaaS startups often need to find a Trojan horse that appeals to these users. And once it's part of their routine, they can expand this product to capture other areas of their workflow. This playbook is at the heart of many vertical SaaS companies as it helps solve the how to enter a vertical market question. But it's also an answer to the question of small ACVs as many of these customers cannot be upsell like enterprise customers. So a vertical SaaS product must expand its scope in the customer stack if it wants to scale revenue. In this video, I will cover the four most common Trojan horse that I see in vertical SaaS software. And if I forgot any, please let me know in the comments. The first generation of vertical SaaS startups used a straightforward Trojan horse in the form of process specific software. What does it mean? Basically, each industry slash vertical has its own sets of specific processes slash workflows. For example, restaurant owners need a booking system to manage table reservations. Hotel owners need a booking system to manage their guests and the availability of their rooms. Construction companies need to manage their construction projects as well as the timetable of their workers, etc, etc. This is why many first-generation vertical SaaS simply built software that was helping business owners to do what they traditionally did with good old papers or spreadsheets. The main value propositions of these process-specific software products was to increase the efficiency of these customers by essentially digitizing their core processes. It's a very common Trojan horse used by the first generation of vertical SaaS, such as Procore, for example, because at that time, the SaaS model was new. Very few business owners in these verticals were equipped with such software. But now that an increasing number of these industries are crowded with this process-specific SaaS, vertical SaaS founders have to find another way to get in. The next generation of vertical SaaS Trojan horses were invoicing tools. One of the components that many of the process-specific software companies that we just saw did not offer was the invoicing part. Many businesses use spreadsheets and old-school invoice software to manage their accounts payable and accounts receivable. But in many industries, you have very specific needs when it comes to managing these invoices, from different types of customers, to 30 days payment terms or invoices pay in several installments. Verticalized invoicing solutions are made to address these pain points. What's also interesting to notice is that this kind of Trojan horse appeals to another persona, this time the people who stay in the office and manage all the administrative tasks. The value proposition for them are to reduce the time they spend on managing invoices and also to get a better overview of their overall revenue streams since they know better who has paid what and what needs to be recovered. An interesting aspect of invoicing software is that it's a complementary piece to the process-specific software that we saw previously. Many businesses that put in place a business-specific software can complement it with a SaaS to manage their account receivable and payable. And logically, the next step for vertical SaaS is to go even deeper in the stack and to tackle payment itself. Similar to invoicing, payment flows can be very different from one vertical to the other. This is why the past couple of years, we have witnessed the rise of vertical payment platforms. Instead of using a generous payment platform such as PayPal or Stripe, these verticalized payment solutions are integrated into businesses specific workflows and enable them to own the transaction with their customers or suppliers. That way, businesses can offer a better payment slash checkout experience to their customers with, for example, more payment options or different payment workflows. The value propositions are quite appealing as owning the payment flows often leads to more successful transactions, for example. It can also reduce the complexity that exists in many verticals like compliance and other payment related frictions such as international transfers. Last but not least, verticalized 
payment solutions sometimes offer lower fees compared to generalist solutions. It's worth mentioning that this new wave of verticalized payment solutions has been possible because the underlying fintech infrastructure is now democratized. Many payment processors and payment providers now offer developer-friendly APIs and tools on which this ecosystem of verticalized payment platforms is built. The last Trojan horse I want to touch upon are data aggregators. In many industries, data fragmentation is a real pain. The main promise of data aggregators is to enable businesses to aggregate in one place data that is usually scattered around. And sometimes to let businesses access new data sources that are normally out of their reach. Aggregating data is actually very useful for business owners and finance teams to monitor and optimize part of their business. It also often enables them to handle financial and compliance reporting much more easily. So these were the four main Trojan horse that vertical SaaS companies use to penetrate vertical markets. In the next video, I will cover in more detail the expansion strategy used once the Trojan horde has entered the place.